All right, so yesterday when we left off, um, Henry was at play practice, and he said he was just singing a really dumb song about waiting for Santa. It was the dumbest song Henry had ever heard. Hurrah for Santa. It was just plain stupid. He felt a little better when he learned that Robert had to sing an even dumber song called Wolf, Wolf, I'm a Brown Dog. As Christmas drew near, Henry became even more discouraged. Everybody in Glenwood School called him Little Boy. His mother and father found out about his part in the play because Mary Jane told her mother and she told Henry's mother. He had to learn his lines and recite them every evening while his father looked at the part and prompted him. He scarcely had time to go out to the garage and peek at the flexible flyer package. Mrs. Huggins went downtown to buy him a pair of new pajamas to wear in the first act. They were made of pink and blue and white striped flannel. Henry felt that any pajamas were bad enough, but pink and blue pajamas? He didn't even like to think about them. Henry swallowed hard every morning. He hoped his throat might be a little bit sore, but it never was. Finally, he gave up. There was no way out. Now all he wanted was to get it over. One afternoon during fifth period, Henry looked out the window and saw a few feathery snowflakes drifting down. They were so light he wasn't sure at first. When Miss Roop wasn't looking, he leaned over closer to the window. It was snow, all right. It wasn't going to be a green Christmas after all. Now he would get to use his flexible flyer. The rest of the class soon noticed the snow too, and everyone began to whisper. Miss Roop smiled and pretended not to hear. As soon as the bell rang, the children all scrambled from their wraps and rushed out to see the snow, all except those who had parts in the operetta. They took their wraps from the cloakroom and went to the auditorium. The auditorium was a busy place. In one corner of the room, mothers from the Parent Teacher Association were altering costumes for the polar bear chorus. Henry remembered those white suits. He'd worn one when he had been an Easter Bunny in a spring program. Now the mothers were ripping off the long ears and fuzzy tails and were sewing on short ears and straight tails to change the suits into polar bear costumes. The stage crew was at work. Some of the 8th grade boys were turning different colored lights on and off. At the back of the stage, Scooter, standing on a board laid across two step ladders, was painting scenery with green paint. Henry sat down to wait for his turn while Mary Jane and Beezus rehearsed their dance, and Robert, wearing his dog suit, practiced walking on all fours. Henry waited and waited. He sat in the hard auditorium chair and looked out of the window at the snowflakes. He could hear the other kids laughing and yelling outside, so he knew there must be enough snow for snowballs. He wished his turn would come so he could leave. Now the tin soldiers were practicing their steps. At the end of their song and dance, one of the stage crew threw a basketball across the stage in front of them. It was supposed to look like a cannonball, and the tin soldiers were supposed to fall over with one leg in the air. Miss Roop didn't like the way they fell, and she made them do it over several times. Henry wandered up on the stage behind the tin soldiers to watch Scooter paint scenery. What are you supposed to be painting? he asked him. Trees, answered Scooter, with real paint. Where'd you get it? A fella in my room's father had a paint store, and he just gave it to us. Just then, Henry heard a bark. It sounded like Ribsy. It was Ribsy. He bounded in through the door of the auditorium, ran up the steps to the stage, and wormed his way behind the row of tin soldiers to get to Henry. He shook himself and wagged his tail. Well, Ribsy, old boy, said Henry. Did you get tired of waiting out in the cold? Ribsy shook himself again, and Henry patted him. My ribs are all wet. It must be snowing hard. He's a dumb-looking dog, said Scooter. Oh, he is not. He's a smart dog, aren't you, Ribsy? Oh, I'll bet he can't climb a stepladder like my dog can, said Scooter. I'll bet he can. Call him and see. Scooter looked down at the dog. Here, Ribsy, he called out. Come on, boy. Ribsy looked at him and then at Henry. Go on, said Henry, up the ladder. He pointed to the ladder. Ribsy put one paw on the bottom step. Atta boy, go on. Ribsy carefully put a paw on the next step. Good dog, said Henry, urging him on. Come on, Ribsy, coaxed Scooter. Ribsy cautiously made his way up to the board on top of the step ladders. Good old Ribsy, said Henry. See, I told you he could do it. Pleased with himself, Ribsy looked down at his master, wagged his tail, and said, Woof. You be quiet, ordered Henry in a loud whisper. If Miss Roop hears you, she'll throw you out. So the dog 
is up on a stepladder on a board with a bunch of paint. Does anyone have a prediction that something not good is about to happen? We'll have to wait and find out tomorrow. Bye guys.